This podcast may contain adult themes. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The views and opinions in this podcast are expressly our own. When I get to the workplace, I like to fuck shit up. Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. Hey, are you tired of toxic workplaces and the negativity that comes with them? We hear you and we're here to shake things up. Welcome to Let's Break Up Toxic Workplace Stories, the podcast that's all about breaking up with workplace toxicity. I'm Nicola and I'm here with my co-host Gina. Together, we're going to explore real life experiences of workplace toxicity and offer a sense of encouragement and unity. That's right. We're tackling the tough topic of negativity in the workplace and turning it into a movement for positivity. We'll be interviewing guests to share their experiences and offer practical solutions for dealing with workplace toxicity. Our aim is to promote solidarity and a sense of community amongst our listeners. Let's Break Up is quickly becoming the go-to source for anyone looking to share and then ditch the drama and create a happier, healthier work environment. So join us each week as we explore the various forms of toxicity in the workplace. Get ready to join the revolution against red flags and toxic workplaces. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell all your friends. In this week's episode, welcome to part two of our amazing episode with Raina. We are so excited to do part two as well because you know we've listened to the story. It's been amazing. The roller coaster of emotions, the roller coaster of characters, it's been phenomenal. And just when you thought it couldn't get any weirder or more plot twisty, it did. It does. <laughs> it, it's it's miserable. <laughs> it's crazy. Um oh. she is so composed and the way she handled these situations, like I would, I could never, I could never, I would have she, lost my top like a million times by oh, now. For sure. And she comes up with such clever ideas on how to solve the problems. Yes. I'm like, I was like in awe, like when she was talking about the watermark and genius, like fuzzy thumb, I learned something new, you know, and I'm in the, we're both in the creative space. I never knew that theory. So I love that. I, I love, love how much she listens to her parents and like how supportive they are. Like I want I also them. Love, I love all of this. I love all of it. We I'm, got to I'm meet, on board with all of it. We got to meet her baby. You guys won't be able to see her, but she's amazing. And you'll hear the little gurgle. You might hear some. Well. You won't see her, but you'll hear she's her. Got a little and snore because she fell asleep in Raina's arms. I can't. Like little snore. Like it's too oh, much. It's so cuteness cute. overload. It was a bit cuteness overload. Yeah. Um, so that is episode, is part two, episode five billion and six at this point. We don't even know at this point because we're recording this at some point in the future or no, actually in the past, if you yeah. think about it, yeah. when oh, you're yeah, listening yeah, yeah. to this and we can't really keep up yes. with what's getting published when, so good luck. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So where do Next you land? Down. Okay, the next the job that I got that was like bigger and better than the previous job was at a video game company. And oh man, it was I went back to enjoying my job again. I loved my coworkers. Like we would like often do like coffees and lunches together and uh, I was as part of my job I was required to play video games at work, which was like a dream for me. Boo hoo for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I got to do really fun design work and I started managing a team for the first time. So all that stuff was fantastic. And I got along so well with um, my coworkers. I'm still friends with like a lot of them today. Even my one um, uh, friend that I was a boss of, um, she came to visit me in New Zealand. Um, Aww, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, uh, Oh, and my boss there was like the best boss I've ever had at any job. Um, I learned so much from him and I'm still learning from him. Like I still ask him questions sometimes when I'm struggling with like managerial kind of situations. That's so cool that you have someone that you can like always go to as like to bounce ideas off of or something. Yeah. It was like, I finally found that mentor that I've been looking for mm -hmm. for a few years. So that was really great. Mm -hmm. um, after so, two so years, was this a good place? Or not good place. It was great. It was really great. And then it ended up not being great <laughs> later. I'm sense I'm <laughs> sensing a theme, Raina. Everything starts great, then ends up not great. 
Honestly, okay. it seemed like the pattern was when it was a startup, it was great. But then when it got bought out by a corporation, then that's when it started it became not great. Okay. going pay All right. Yeah. Um, so after two years, our team restructured and I got new team members and a new boss who is the CTO. I remember my mom warning me not to wear my engagement ring around the office because I was recently engaged. And I thought that was like so old fashioned. What was your um, reasoning? Do you know? Because I was about to get this new position. I had to kind of interview for this new position. And so my mom's like, it might hurt your chances of getting hired. Oh, okay. if they that see makes that sense. No, I, I, I think there's val- validity to it. Because then, especially if it's men who are in charge of hiring, they're going to think, okay, she's about to get married. You know, she's going to go off on her honeymoon. She's going to get knocked up and then she's going to be mm-hmm. out. So mm-hmm. I think there is validity to it. But anyway, what did you do? Did you wear the ring? I did not. I took my mom's oh. advice and I did not wear it. Um, I thought it was old fashioned, but I was like, you know what? There's Every time I don't listen to my mom, there's like a problem. So I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and I like that. So, so um, after I got the role, he told me that I was really smart not to wear my ring during the interview and that he wouldn't have hired me if I wore it. And he asked me, like, how long have you been engaged? I was like, you don't need to know that. Right? Um, At least he's and, honest, uh, right? Okay. <laughs> I guess. So, like, I'm, yeah. I'm grasping So I know where strong. I stand. Yeah. I know where I stand right away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll call my new boss Blue Steel, okay? Because he always made a certain look, a very specific look. Um, and he would often remind everyone that he used to be a model back in his home country and everything. And I even Which included probably a meant nothing to us here in America. <laughs> nothing. So, so for so, anyone who yeah. like watches 90 Day F- or Fiance with- um, This show then- ever. Okay. And then we have the spinoff from that Darcy and Stacy and Stacy's husband was a model in like, where, where was it? He had like, anytime they're like, Oh, Florian's a model. They have like two pictures from when he was modeling. Like that was it. He probably had one photo shoot. Right. So it was it something similar to that. No, like the- he, they'd often ask him to pose with the products. Blue Steel starts flirting. And when I reminded him that I was engaged, uh, he said, don't does care. that matter? No, yeah. he didn't. Right. They don't yeah. fucking care. You're not married. Like how cute and like ide- idealistic you are. You're like, hello, I'm engaged. And men do not care. Some women don't You're care either. Okay. So, okay. yes, men do not give a shit. Yeah. So okay. he, yeah, he didn't try. He didn't care. Like he would like try and like kiss oh. my hand and, you what? know, whatever. Yeah, like do stuff like that. Um, Gross. Goodbye. So we continued to butt heads too because he was like a bit misogynistic. Um, you don't say. <laughs> yeah, not to mention it being a video game company it was already kind of like a boys' club. But yeah, it's skewed towards the, men. Yeah, but the new com- part of the company that I worked in was like a total boys' club, and I have to. I, I often had to like inceptionize my teammates to think that my idea was theirs so that they could present it to my boss because my boss wouldn't accept my idea but he would accept it if it came from the guys do you think he was doing that because he felt like you rejected him uh I don't know like I think so I I I think I think that I mean I think it's pretty transparent yeah like without being able to read his mind you know yeah it definitely felt that way yeah but to Wait, illustrate, have you watched the uh, uh, the show on? I don't. Do you get it? What the hell is it called? Um, it's on Apple Plus. It's about oh god, Rob Mickle, whatever the hell his name is from. It's always sunny. Is is oh. plays the oh Mythic Quest. Mythic. I Quest. had to. I had to stop watching it because it was too real. That's. I was like, this sounds like fucking Mythic Quest right now. Okay. Yeah, it was very similar to that. Okay. Yeah. Cuz like mm. he, but this but Rob, how do you say his last name? Mech. Oh, I don't know. It's like I don't know. Some very But I know Irish. who you're talking about. Yeah, the guy from It's Always Sunny and whatever. Mac. But he, <laughs> Mac. Yeah. But Mac is actually fucking hot. That's true. 
So it's it's like the actual version of this story, Mythic Quest. Okay, I got you. All right. So so So, he feels rejected. You're not Mm. getting your ideas across unless they're coming from someone else. And then what? Um, to illustrate the boys club, um, like in meetings, like, um, this guy, I'll just call him high hair because he was foreign and from Europe and had really tall hair. Um, so next high hair, hair, hair. Hold on, I'm going to create high hair. Jesus. I've got to keep up with these cards. Okay. So high hair, like it was really common, like in meetings, if someone said something that he didn't like he would like do like a, like a jerking off motion. Like he'd be like, you know, if he didn't like what you said, but the thing like that part didn't even bother me as much as he would like finish. Like (laughs) the jerk, wait, wait, let's, let's just recap. So the jerk off motion itself, not offensive. The finishing and spreading was the offensive part. For some reason, I love that. Because I, you know, I, I was used to working with guys. So like a lot of guys do that. So yeah, I was like, and I, okay, e- I even but... do that. Like I'll yeah. even do that sometimes, but I don't, Maybe not you're right. I don't place. finish and spread and flourish. So, okay. so I, I suggested something that he didn't like and he did the thing. And then, um, I called did him he out. Finish, uh, did he finish on your boobs or on your face? I'm just wondering <laughs> we finished. No, he was he was spreading it around to the whole team, it seems like. You know, you yeah. don't need a protein shake in the morning. Just go for your daily gross <laughs> from high hair. So, yeah, from so when hair. I called out high hair on his... I got like, high <laughs> hopes for a minute. Do, 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 no, do, do, don't do, start do, do. this bullshit because then it's going to get stuck in my head. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so what? So, so you go to him and you say you call him I out. I complain. Yeah, I call him out in the middle of the meeting, like in front of my coworkers, and I'm just like, "This, can you not do that, please?" And then my coworkers jump in and they're like, "Rena, you're too sensitive. It's not like he was spraying you. It was an equal opportunity spray. Like, stop being so sensitive." Jesus, <laughs> Rena, stop being so sensitive. What a dick. Well, it was yeah. equal opportunity, so we all mm. got a little bit of the action there. Mm, mm, yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that was just to illustrate one of the things that made it kind of boys club. So yeah, Blue Steel continued doing questionable things, like he'd try to put his arm around me during meetings. Um, he'd like cuddle up real close, like almost like if we were dating or something. Like when I was like trying to give a presentation, I'm like, why are you on me? Like I literally had to like push him like away like he would just Mm. be so close um and um he would try and get me alone and like after work and stuff like into like separate like little offices and stuff and then he'd like invite me over to his penthouse so he could like bake me European bread and we could listen to jazz (laughs) that sounds like the word like the like my date from hell Oh my God, that's totally my vibe. Like, let's bake some bread, my language of love. And then, oh my God, like, let's not listen to your weird music. Let's listen to mine. I'm surprised Mm. it wasn't Rammstein. (laughs) I would just be like, oh, I'm not interested in that, but you can bring me some homemade bread tomorrow at work right here. (laughs) He did make good bread. He brought it in sometimes. See? Okay. (laughs) The Europeans know how to make good bread. Yeah. Yeah, I believe Um, that. I believe that. Okay. So you're like no jazz, no fucking half naked bread on your yeah. penthouse terrace, whatever. Yeah. Jackass. Yeah. yeah. Being the CTO, he could afford things like that. Um, oh, nice. And then, yeah. And then one time I said I was going to a female co worker's house to work from her house because like the internet went down. And he asked me in front of her to videotape the pillow fight for him. Yeah. So Ew. things like that. So, like, it's like, I don't even, I feel like it is kind of overt sexual harassment, but some people might consider that like subtle. Mm-hmm. Also, they could, they could, you know, negotiate that it's, you know, cultural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- there could be an argument, a flimsy one, loosely that maybe that's related to wherever mm-hmm. he was from. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it either. Okay. Oh, I, wait, I went so to wait. HR. Did you did you 
Did you film the pillow fight? And if so, what <laughs> down count were the pillows? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not feel, film the pillow fight in slow motion. Because there was no. none. What? There was and no guys pillow are fight? So Why stupid. am I even subscribed to this podcast, really? <laughs> <laughs> My friend was Italian, so she made me butter pasta for the first time and changed my life. But oh, other than my that, God. okay. So anyway, um, I went. They so got HR because he's being a jackass. Yeah. No, he's being a jerk off. Right. <laughs> no, that was high hair. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I was told when I when I told the HR lady, she told me that there was no possible way that he could be harassing me because he never came on to her. So my oh, case wait. is <laughs> What? Um, I just, you know what, you know what interests me about the story? You know what really like just develops the story for me is that if pretty much every line of sentence you have, Raina, next minute, Gina and I are sitting here like, what? So was she like insanely attractive? No, she was like, I, I would think, I, honestly, if I were to give it, like I think she was like two points below me okay oh, fair enough but but, but the reason why I asked that but, yeah. was because it's like if she was like some model-esque like you know there are some women out there who just have that going on for them who are insanely attractive and men women everyone will notice it maybe I could give her the benefit of the doubt but I cannot we cannot Okay, so what no, are we what calling her? So bitchy HR lady? Because I've got to, you know, make a new card now. Oh, I, I don't know. She's a one-time, one-time. Um, okay, okay. We won't edit so card no card list, needed. But, yeah, but I. Well, um, he didn't hit on me, so therefore it's not true because he would have hit on me before you. And I, I made the point. Like I told her, like I remember telling her, like, well, you're Caucasian. Maybe he's into like ethnic girls. That's the thing. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Who do we know? Like, who do? who are we to say who people will find attractive, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So it got to the point where he was like harassing me so much that I would take my laptop and like hide from him on the floor that I used to work on with my old teammate and to just get away from him. And they would like protect me and he would come looking for me and they would say, Oh, Raina's not here. Try one of the other floors. Would just so he, I like, could get my work. Try done. to Hansel and Gretel you with little like pieces of his homemade bread. I would, I would, I would be, tra- I would be tricked because I'd be trapped. I would, <laughs> I would, I would be, be in like... trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I would be in the oven at this point. And also, yeah. I'm, I'm quite curvy, so I'd make a delicious meal. <laughs> okay, so people were people. So people knew this was like a well-known yeah. secret. Kind. It of. was well known. Yeah, there weren't okay. any women in the in the office, and so yeah. it was it was known that he would always try to do stuff. And um, my boss. Uh, blue steel said in front of my team he was like you know i'm sorry for you know everything that's going on between us i want to repair our relationship and he's like you know i'll buy you some flowers to apologize and i said if you buy me flowers i will slap them out of your hands um and my teammates were like why are you being such a jerk he's just trying to be nice to you i'm like by buying flowers that's like a romantic thing romantic gesture yes that is weird Agreed. again but, my language of love is presents so if you were my manager and you brought me flowers i would be really but not excited. flowers bring me some fucking like louboutins or something <laughs> no i would be happy with flowers idiot. that are gonna die no yeah. or some bread like something not romantic well right. he was offering you the bread already now now brown cow <laughs> <laughs> but only if i ate it in his penthouse though and like uh, in front of them uh, with like yeah. the butter dripping down. I, why do I always take it to like liquids <laughs> dripping down? Anyway, carry on. So my teammates, after they kind of chastised me for not accepting yeah. the flower, they said that, you know, what's going to happen to us if he gets fired? You should just like take one for the team. So they kind of knew that I was uncomfortable, but they're like, you should just deal with it because it'll affect all of us if you take them down pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. soon after a few people did quit and I knew that they really needed me not to quit too, uh, okay. especially in the design capacity. So I said that I'd stay if Blue Steel agreed to give me a promotion. Okay. Um, 
I had been working there for a couple years already. I felt like I was ready for the next step and that I could do the job well. And I was kind of already doing a lot of things that were next level. Right. Yeah. So he said he would let me work in a managerial capacity for a while. And then if I, could, I proved that I could do it, then he'd give me the job. Like he's like six months, eight months, a year later. So I, I was like, no, I've already proven that I could do the job. Um, so you're going to have to promote me and compensate me like, you know, in order to perform at a higher level. Right. And if you don't, I'm just going to continue performing at my current level. Like I'm not going to do anything more than that. And he said that it was probably for the best, um, because being a manager, it was a very stressful job for a woman. And that, you know, it was probably for the best that I didn't get a higher role. So I called his bluff and I didn't do any more than what I was paid to do, um, which was kind of, they were getting buried. And so he was forced to kind of offer me the promotion. Um, And so he, um, I asked him like, okay, when can I see the compensation, you know? And he responded back saying that the title should be enough, that he didn't need to compensate me monetarily for the new role. So of course I refused the, the role. Good for you. And so I'm like, well, what do I do now? Because he's really pressuring me to do this. I don't really want to quit. Um, but like, I don't want to continue getting pressured like this. And I do deserve to get this promotion. Um, and I think I'd be great at it. And so again, I talked to my dad and my dad was like, okay. Then he's like, do you have, does the CEO of the company have like an open door policy? And I said, yes. And so my dad is like, okay, does he know you? And then I said, yeah, he, you know, he knows my name and stuff. And then he's like, okay. And then he's like, well, what you have to do is take all emotion out of it. Don't go in there saying this guy's sexual harassment. This guy is, you know, like, you know, anti-woman, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. He's like, go in and specifically say how the company would be at a disadvantage and lose revenue if you're not at performing at this higher level or how much money they lose if you quit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. I just made this like little thing showing how much, you know, I contribute directly or contributed in sales last year, how much that, blah, 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 like that whole thing. Uh, when I told the CEO what happened, oh, he actually asked me how much I wanted to be paid for this new role. And he was like, okay, throw out a number. How much do you want to get paid? And I was like, uh, and I just said a number. And then he's like, all right, I'll have HR drop the paper immediately. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. So, um, shortly after that, like right at like the next day, blue steel brought me into a meeting and he presented me with the, well, he had to present me with the paperwork to sign. Um, and so he took that opportunity to apologize for his behavior. And he, he said, you know what? He's like, now I realize that you're a delicate flower and that you need the title and the money in order to feel validated. So I brought I this for like, you. How would you feel if you were in my position and I said, you have to do more work, but you're not getting paid anything. Yeah. What a dickwad. Okay. Yeah. And then he's like, you know what? I'm, you know, I just want to formally apologize. And I'm glad that we could still be friends. And of course, you know, that this promotion means a lot of late night meetings. So we, probably have those over dinner some nights you know um we'll pick somewhere nice (laughs) so after like insulting me he immediately tries to like ask me out like in the same breath right so please tell me he gets fired (laughs) uh yes in a way um so I told him I was like you know what we're not friends I'm paid to interact with you I was like, you get two meetings on office grounds. That's it, like per week. And then I signed the paperwork. So as a new manager, I started building out my new team. And at that point, the relationship between me and my boss had degraded so much. And I was stressing out so much that I'd often like hyperventilate on the way mm-hmm. to work. Or like on Sundays, I would just dread, you know, yeah. going in somewhere. Yeah. Um, and my fiance, who's now my husband, Um, he offered to like go in and put it, my boss in his place, you know, and all this stuff. Um, but I told him, I was like, look, if he only respects me when you're around, then he'll never respect me when you're not around, which is most of the time. And it might actually backfire. He might use, he might've used that as like a means to kind of get back to back at you. Like, oh, you can't fight your own battles. You, you delicate little flower. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so I'm glad mm-hmm. that your husband didn't. So it started reminding me of my pre- previous nightmare job, you know, that picture. I mm-hmm. looked at that and I was like, you know what? I think it's probably getting time to quit. Yeah. So my husband got a job opportunity to come out here in New Zealand. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put in my resignation. Like, you know, I'm kind of yeah. done and ready for the next stage anyway. So I still needed one more designer for my team before I left. And here's a return player. So do you remember Scabs from my first job? How could we forget forget Scabs? I mean... Okay. Why is he back? So he applied to be a manager on my team and I rejected his application immediately and applied his resume. Yeah. As do not hire ever. And he went on to be jobless for like another four years. Um, Yeah. Yeah. He still went on to have like multiple sexual harassment complaints about, uh, about him. They, they started hiring, um, a lot of, women in the, mm-hmm. in the office and a lot of them were ethnic women and oh. so now this caused all sorts of problems and they would not to single him out they would make the whole company do sexual harassment like video training they, ca- they kind of have to they can't <laughs> yeah I get it yeah. okay yeah and after a certain point like um they that's when me too exploded and mm. so they got some flack uh from during that time And so they like corrected their, the company and Blue Steel mysteriously had a swift exit to his home country. So now fast forward, I looked him up recently because this podcast. So now he is CEO of a similar company in his home country. All right. Well, they can keep them. So yeah. yeah, So that's my second job. Are are there more? Uh, There's just one more, the New Zealand job. Uh, yeah, I say entertainment company. Okay, like, so you know, it's, yeah. it's an entertainment company based in New Zealand. You came yeah. out here following your husband who got a job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was one of my dream jobs that I've ever mm-hmm. wanted since I was a kid when I wanted to work in this industry. Like, So I was so excited to have this job. And it was the most creatively inspiring place I'd ever worked. The artists were some of the best in the world. You know, they have like Oscars and BAFTAs and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just learned so much from them. And I feel like my artistic creativity just like bloomed. Um, Mm -hmm. And the owner was like such a like creative genius. Like just getting to hear a little bit of his thought process was so like help, like informative for me. And Mm -hmm. I learned so much. So um, my Kiwi boss, um, let's call him Winton. Winton? Uh, yes. Okay. Because he, he had a dog um, that looked a lot like a dog from the cartoon that my daughter watches, who's called Winton. So. Okay. And Winton had a very similar, uh, I mean, uh, Winton's dog had a very similar uh, personality to his owner. Like he would like go like get all in your face. And then if you Wait, even which, just looked at him. Is this a Kiwi show? Uh, it's Australian show. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I was like, yeah. I don't, this sounds like a fun show. I want my daughter oh, to watch oh, it. You'll, oh, she'll love it. I'll tell you about it later. When I challenged Winton on some of his morally questionable behavior, he tried everything possible, like everything possible to get me What fired. was morally questionable? Can you give us an example? Yeah, so he, a lot of nepotism, he would hire his friends for jobs, even though they were awful, and the company would spend, like, thousands on a really awful, and then he would ask me to convince the stakeholder to go with his friend instead of someone who was qualified, Um, and sometimes he would have, like, up-and-coming artists do, like, a sample to try and get hired, and then he would use that sample Uh, for, like, the job. That, that happened to me when they had me, when you probably heard when I, they wanted me to do like an importing before I was oh, hired. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very similar to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, what I like, I just like asked him about it one time and I found out that he was actually really upset because I got hired instead of his friend. <laughs> and so he tried to deny me raises or demote me to try and get me to leave. But I always made sure that uh, my work was visible to the company and that like I had transparency of like all the work that I contributed as an individual mm-hmm. to the company, stuff that I had learned from my previous like crappy jobs. Mm-hmm. And um, HR ended up 
putting him on probation and he had to do a management course as kind of like and did that help anything uh at first I thought it did um because like he seemed like really friendly at first like it took a while for him to kind of reveal his true colors you know Mm, so he started asking yeah so he started acting nice again and so I thought oh maybe you know he learned or something but then he started telling me things like, you know, I've always dreamed about being a bully. Um, and that's why I became a, a boss. Um, and, or he'd say like, you know, that's why I don't hire Americans. If you were a Kiwi, you'd just go back to your desk and silently hate me like you're supposed to, instead of like confronting me about it. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I, I don't, I don't understand what being kiwi and being american has to do with anything but that's like stupid it's like if somebody's doing something wrong or is incapable somebody should say something yeah kiwis are usually from because most of the people in my job were kiwis um Mm -hmm. and they do tend to be i feel like a lot more patient than americans and a lot less likely to speak up when they're being kind of treated unfairly um so yeah um but like, eventually I told him, I was like, you know what? I've been in this role for so long. I was like, you know, I, I know your friend didn't get hired, but you know, I feel like I've, hopefully I've proven that I do deserve the job and that like, I've been contributing positively to the team. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you know, you're a good fit for the job, not for the team. And I'll never forgive you for getting, being hired instead of my friend. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. What, yeah. what is this? Like, what are you in like 10th grade? I know. I was was like, okay, uh, how do I go back to work? Okay, sorry. (laughs) Like, it wasn't even your fault you got hired. You got hired, you know? There was nothing I could do with. This is so petty and childish and just just a bit, it's going to be a no for me. Well, and I remember one of your podcasts talking about the way that you were hired was like, you know, maybe like, uh, not the usual way of getting hired and that kind of mm-hmm. um put a sour taste in people's mouths even before you started yeah um and like for me like you know that I got hired and then the guy the boss he posted like he shared a communication to the the company and he was like oh he's like so and so is out um it's time for the queen to reign now because reina means queen Raina. right and like, instead of like being tactful and like, you know, explaining that the person decided to move on and Raina is taking her the place and she's very talented or whatever they say, she's just like, oh, this person's out long live the queen. And of course, everyone's going to hate me after having like, you know, like, that. like immediately. Well, I kind of had to prove myself and then eventually people liked me and stuff like okay. that. But yeah, it, it definitely took some work to. Yeah. yeah. So he kind of set you up for failure almost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so randomly one day after completing the management training, Winton actually offered me a promotion. Holy Um, shit. Didn't see that coming. Plot twist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he asked me to send him an email outlining what I felt the gaps in the team were, um, and what I could contribute to this new role. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a trap. Is this going to be a trap? It was a trap. It's a trap. Okay. How did this become a trap? Well, because he then took those points that I wrote out and he used that to create a job posting to hire someone else for that position. What a slimy little bastard. So he, it gets better. So he told me, of course, he said, you know, you can apply for this new position that I posted. And he said, of course, that would mean that we'd have to hire someone new for your current position. So he's like, if you decide to apply for the new one, um, you know, like I'd have to be okay with potentially being replaced before the interview process was done for this new role. And then I wouldn't have a job anymore. So he said, you know, it's up to you of what you want to do. If you want to try your chance at getting this higher position, or if you want to stay where you're at. So what did you do? So um, I ended up staying where I was at. And uh, I said, I'm not interviewing for my Do you think that was the right decision? I think so, because at that point, there was, it was, there's already poison in the water. Like he, yeah. there was nothing I could do to convince him. Um, 
And so he ended up hiring a designer, um, a design manager without any input from me being the design, lead designer. Uh, I was like the de design manager and this is like a step up from design manager. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I pointed out, I was like, hey, like I saw her resume. She's actually like really underqualified for this role. Um, I don't know if you knew because you're not a graphic designer. Maybe you don't know. Right. Sure. And he said the only reason he hired her but was because he thought she could go toe to toe with me. And he's like, she'll be on my side and she can go toe to toe what? with you. And that's all that matters. Yeah. I hate this person. Okay. So then what happened? So in the meantime, uh, one of my subordinates was a senior that had been at the company a really long time. And she was really well loved. She was like mm -hmm. so sweet. Like I thought we were going to become like really good friends, like some of my previous jobs. Uh, we'll call her Two-Faced. How did I know? Two-Faced. Okay. So like from Batman, Two-Faced. Yeah. No, so, I'm with you. Yeah. So unfortunately, I discovered that she actually wasn't doing her own work. Um, she was doing paid freelance work on the job. And she was so forcing. Yeah. Wait, so she was doing other work that she was getting paid for, uh, like on the side, like her side hustle on company time. Yes. Okay. Just making sure um, I got it. Yeah. So she was doing that on company time, which is why she wasn't meeting any of her deliverables. And she was forcing the junior designer to do all her work and say that it was this two face, but it wasn't. It was the junior designer's work. The junior designer was amazing. Okay. She was so Just good, curious. but in order to like, be able to do this, she had to like, you know, work crazy hours to do the work of mm -hmm. two people. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. And so because I had done design management for a while now, like I was able to pick up on, Hey, this is a particular design style that this designer makes instead of that designer. Um, and so I'm like, I know you didn't make this because mm -hmm. back to my, you know, first job days where I put the watermarks in and yep. stuff, like I knew like kind of the language, the design language that is unique to every designer on my team. So, um, so yeah, so I tried to fix the issue and she ended up getting really upset about this. And she told everyone that I was really incompetent and that I was a bully and that, um, you know, like I was making her life a living hell. And so she went to HR saying that I was bullying her. Um, and so as part of that, I was given a new script for emails that I had to do when talking to coworkers that was less abrasive. So I remember one of your podcasts where you're talking about Kiwis versus America, where you have to do this whole flow. How's your day? Hope all's well, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, can you send this file, you know, um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't used to that. Like in my job with the awesome manager before this one, he often told me, he's like, Rena, if you're going to be a manager, just cut straight to the point. I don't have time to skim Thank through. You. Yeah. He's like, just say what you need from me. And so I, that's what I did, was doing at this new job. And so I actually got in trouble for being a bully because I wasn't putting so the fluff. Did I. <laughs> I didn't fluff my emails. Yeah. Same thing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. So shortly after she started sab sabotaging my managerial processes on purpose to say that they didn't work and that we would miss our deadlines because I sucked as a manager. Ugh, um, right. Of course you did. Yeah. Purposely missing deadlines, you know, like all that stuff. And I created style guides because I was like a brand. Um, I did mm -hmm. brand as well. So I created style guides to kind of streamline our design processes um, and whenever I, I noticed whenever I had a sick day or I called off for vacation or something, she'd actually throw away or accidentally delete the style guides or she this would tell This is so stupid. Story. Yeah. So I'd literally find the print that I made because I did digital and gave prints yeah. to the stakeholders. I'd literally find them in the trash. She would go to their desks and find this, the style guide on their desk and throw it away. Um, or she'd tell them that, you know, there was a new style guide and that this one was irrelevant, even though mm -hmm. there wasn't, um, mm -hmm. just to kind of sabotage her. Um, I hate this person with all of my heart. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I was well-seasoned. It isn't my first rodeo. So I had multiple physical copies in my desk. I had copy, digital copies everywhere. 
Um, so it, every time she threw it out, I just bring out my next copy that I already had. Yeah. Um, so, um, I was eventually able to prove what she was doing. Um, you know, taking, doing the paid freelance work on company time, first in the junior designer to do the work, like all that stuff. And mm-hmm. she was actually put on probation and oh, she eventually, she, she decided to leave the company eventually. Yeah. And yeah. obviously you guys never rekindled any type of friendship. No. Um, if anything, she cost me some friendships at that job of like some people that were like, I thought were like my close friends because she told them I bullied her and forced her out when of course that wasn't actually what happened. And like, they don't speak to me to this day because of it. Uh, so bummer, but, uh, yeah. But like, were um, they really your friends to begin with? If they believed this person, likely that, not. That's always, yeah. That's always you what know? I say. I'm like, you know, that's why I don't care about hearsay. Cause it's like, you're obviously not a real friend. So. Yeah. Right. Because if they knew you, like you don't strike me as someone who would go out of their way to bully someone. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. So next one, so new card. So at the same job, there was a girl, um, we'll call her Furiosa. So Furiosa was someone I often had to work with and she had serious rage issues. Um, she'd often scream at the top of her lungs. She'd often belittle coworkers. She would curse at them, yell at them, belittle them. She hated if anyone spoke to each other on our team. Um, Why? Like, you know, That's so she stupid. Said, she said she needed absolute silence in order to work. Hey, maybe she was neurodiverse. I'm o- I'm open to that because I struggle with sound. But then get noise canceling headphones. Uh, the noise canceling headphones yeah. don't always work. If you if you've got like misophonia, which is what I've got, I will fixate on the smallest fucking sound, and mm. it's all I can hear. Mm. Mm. But do you scream at people and curse them out though? Uh no. Ah <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. Ironically. I'd love she to. was the communications manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The the yeah the the, the irony twist. is not lost. <laughs> yeah, the plot twists on this one are are very. I'm loving them. Um, so I was turning our team of individual silos into a team that actually communicated and brainstormed together. When you're a creative team, you really need to be able to bounce ideas off each other, like draw stuff on the wall, like you know, like that's part of being a creative person. And um, we also just had some fun together sometimes. Like one of the things that made her the most angry was my share the broccoli game that I do with my coworkers. So remember how I checked out when my previous job like only gave me like the crappy jobs, like, and I didn't get to do the fun stuff anymore. So every once in a while I would put like the dessert jobs and the broccoli jobs like in a hat. And I'd ask the team to close their eyes and like pick out a job. That's fun. Yeah, I thought it was fun. And it was like the great equalizer because it was great for morale because it was fun and it kept egos in check. Like senior designers would have to sometimes do crappy jobs and learn a new appreciation for those roles. I I thought it was fun. And my other coworkers from the team actually thought it was so fun that they'd stop their work to see who got stuck with the broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd like cheer on the winner, you know, and she hated it. Absolutely hated it. It was was too much, too much. Yeah. Yeah. Too much noise. Yeah, too much noise. So most people were afraid of her. Um, but me being from Chicago and Latina, I was like, ah, she does not phase me at all. Right. Um, and I refused to play her games. Like I didn't allow her to yell at me or talk down to me or anything. And I found out she had multiple HR complaints on her, uh, mine being one <laughs> of them. Um, but the HR person told me that she was very stressed out and that we needed to understand Furiosa's mental health journey because she was stressed. And I was like, we're all stressed. We work at an entertainment company, but like, you know, that's a notoriously stressful job. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then HR sent out a communication to the entire department saying that if she yelled at us or cursed at us or whatever, that we weren't allowed to yell back. And that if we needed to speak to her about something, then we had to stand four feet away and wait for her to make visual eye contact. Once she made eye contact, you had to say, may I approach? So maybe she says neurodiverse at this point. I'm starting to believe neurodiversity in this particular instance. I mean, I guess the company's trying to, let's say she is neurodivergent. And I guess this is the company's attempt to be inclusive. 
the inclusive yeah. yeah it just seems very like ham-handed um, yeah or like her her rules or you get nothing or you get screamed at yeah so um there is some like I thought about that sometimes um like oh maybe there was like some sort of neurodivergent thing going on but the thing that made me think maybe not is because um the co- my coworkers adhered to those rules. So they would, you know, be like, may I approach? And she would be like, yes, you may, blah, blah, blah. And um, after work hours, I would often work late because being a manager, you know how that goes. And she, I heard her bragging to the art director after work about how she had everyone jumping through hoops and how like, you know, she loved this new power that she had and it made her feel so like powerful. And She's like, oh, I think I'm going to turn it up a notch and see how much more I can push it. Um, so Ooh, not a good look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she'd mysteriously disappear with the art director for a while. Um, and um, then she would like, like, he would like be like, hey, can you watch my son? I'm going to go with Furiosa for a second and I'll be right back. And I'm like, I'm not your babysitter. I'm a designer. Like, son at work. <laughs> yeah. Why is after work hours? So I was okay. working late, you know. Um, oh, and so the son, he was working late to working late in bunny yeah. years, yeah. Um, air quotes. And okay, that makes more sense now. Go ahead. Okay, so she um, fast forward and she demanded to know why I didn't adhere to HR's uh, mandate about asking to approach her. Um And I told her that if she needed my team to do work for her, that she'd need to talk to me. Like, I'm like, you're just going to have to talk to me if you work for me. I was like, we've got plenty more people that need our time and would use it wisely. So I'm not going to play these games, you know? And of course it, it didn't go well with Furiosa. She was really upset about it. Um, and I tried to like, I'm like, okay, let me just try and think of another way to deal with Furiosa. Um, and so I implemented this online review tool and um, it ended up helping a lot because everyone could see what she was commenting and seeing where she was being like a bottleneck or whatever. So they would follow up like the other stakeholders. So I wouldn't have to. So Mm -hmm. it ended up being a lot better. And then she could comment on her own time. So, you know, like it was, you know, less stressful because I didn't, we didn't have to interact with each other. It was just all online. That's really clever. That's a really smart approach to that. Yeah, that was smart. That's engineering your work, engineering the stress out of your work there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, so unfortunately, things got worse between her and like other departments because now other departments were forced to interact with her more. But, you know, as far as like me personally and my team, uh, it wasn't stressful it like that better. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually she was, quote unquote, promoted out of the way, um, according to one of the other managers, so that the team could work more smoothly and efficiently. Um and uh, I eventually just resigned um, because I had a high risk pregnancy and I needed to focus on that. Uh, I eventually resigned so that I could focus on that. And um, Furiosa and the art director were fired a couple months later for having improper relations on work property. I was, I was going to say, obviously, they those two were fucking. Oh, my God. Wait. Yeah. So that that's pretty much it. Now I have two children and I do brand consulting and teaching and graphic design on the side. And that's uh, that's, that's it awesome. for my job stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, mm-hmm. this was- has been a fucking treat and a ride and a half. What and a roller coaster. I, and I applaud you for being so organized. I really do. Cause as I mean, I'm a mom of one and I have a live-in nanny and I am nowhere near that organized. You guys, right. well, thanks, thanks for later. listening to my crazy stories. Oh my god, it was good. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So well, that brings us now to the end of part two of Raina's story. Um, we're really excited to hear what our listeners thought of this two-parter. Um, we didn't want to put any of it into the bonus episode because we just thought this was way too juicy to not And it was have. so coherent. Just everything was together. It just made sense. 
she was so organized I love it um she also sent us photos um gave us some illustrations which we can't share unfortunately but um I think one or two we can like the shoe we can share the specific shoe that was requested yes um so there might be one or two uh really you good. know picture references that we we might be able to throw up on ig for everyone yeah or just to enhance your listening or viewing experience however yeah. you access our podcast and as always like rate subscribe, subscribe. Do whatever it is that you want to do do it call us don't call us write us Leave an a email. voice message I whatever yes do not send us dick pics though that's not a part no but smoke signals we'll get them carrier pigeon just we we need the support we've been doing so 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 much work um and we just need the support um in in many many ways so that it will enable us to continue to do these awesome um episodes and and allow people to share their stories yeah because i think it's beneficial for everyone involved so for sure yay that's our spiel. That's our that's our used car salesman spiel for our podcast. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to share your story, we would love to hear from you. Also, leaving a review helps us create more content because it shows us there's an interest in this topic. For those of our listeners who do better with reading, we have closed caption available on YouTube. See you next week. Same time and same place.